Local 4 News starts now with a breaking news alert. A Detroit police officer killed in the line of duty, shot inside a home by a gunman with a high-powered rifle. Unfortunately, our 18-year veteran succumbed to his injuries. Four officers go into a house with an armed and dangerous gunman in order to protect our citizens, and uh, uh, we, we lost a hero. And that's where we begin tonight at 11, a tragic night for Detroit police. Two officers shot while responding to a home invasion. One of the officers, an 18-year veteran of the force, was killed. The other officer hospitalized tonight at Sinai Grace. Both were shot after entering a home near Wyoming at 8 Mile. The gunman was also hit. He ran from the scene but was arrested a few blocks away. We have team coverage from the west side where there are two active scenes tonight. We begin with Mar McDonald live at Sinai Grace. Uh, Mar, both the chief and the mayor spoke just moments ago. They did, Kimberly. They wanted to brief us, first of all, on that 18-year-old, 18-year veteran of the department who died from his injuries, but to also let us know what those officers from the 12th precinct had to face tonight. Take a look. The squad cars descended on Sinai Grace. The word was out. Four officers under fire, two hit by a suspect with a high-powered rifle. They had responded to a house near Wyoming in 8 Mile on a report of a home invasion in progress. As the officers arrived, occupants of this home uh, began running out, frantic, approached our officers, and there was a report that there was a suspect inside of the home armed with a rifle. Officers went in, cleared the upper level, and then went downstairs. The suspect, who was armed with a high-powered rifle, began to open fire on the officers. The first officer hit took a bullet in the leg. The chief says he's been on the job three years. The other officer, an 18-year veteran, was hit in the neck. Because it was a high-powered rifle, uh, the round traversed up through the rear of his skull where the bullet was lodged. Docs here at Sinai Grace did what they could, but that 18-year veteran of the force died from his injuries. The officer who was hit in the leg is in recovery right now. The suspect who opened fire on them ran, but didn't get very far. He was hit by police returning fire and is in custody at the hospital. What we do believe is that uh, this was part of a domestic situation. Uh, preliminarily, I can say that he was looking for his girlfriend. He was angry. Back here live, all we're hearing from people on the department tonight is what an exceptionally good man this 18-year veteran of the department was. And we easily had 275 police officers who swarmed this hospital tonight while he was in surgery, hoping and praying for the best. We're live at Sinai Grace. I'm Mara McDonald, Local 4. As they do, Mara, really try to gather around their own and all those families tonight that feel very affected. Indeed. All right, Mar. Well, there is still a large police presence in the area of Wyoming and Chippewa where the two officers were shot just before 7.30 tonight. And Tim Pamplin is there live with more. Tim. Yeah, Devin, this is uh, Wyoming. I'm walking northbound at Chippewa. Evidence technicians out here. There's the home in question out on the front lawn. All the evidence markers. When that call came out at about 7.30 tonight, Detroit police, all law enforcement agencies responded here en masse. Take a look. When the call came out of two officers down. Four, six, Wyoming. There are two officers shot there at that location. The shot officer's colleagues bottling them into the back of the police cruiser and getting them over to the hospital. 153. I'm all clear down in my back seat. I'm on my way to Grace. Responding officers need to know what the situation is on Wyoming and Chippewa. There's a person on the What are they driving into? Her fled, her fled. That's when Detroit police put out the request to local, state, Federal agencies, we need air support. Do we have any air units monitoring? Any air units? The gunman is on the loose in the neighborhood. And that suspect has been shot. He is southbound on Wyoming from Chippewa. I say K9 units and responding officers detect a trail of blood. And then. Who's chasing? I had one in custody for the shooting. That suspect is then transported to Sinai Grace, the same hospital where the two injured officers are in surgery. It's then that a dispatcher tells the officers on the streets. There's nothing stronger than the power of prayer. Amen. Yes, thoughts, prayers uh, going out to the surviving officer.
and to the family of the one that passed away just shortly after this uh, shooting here on Wyoming. That is a scene, a very somber scene here on the northwest side. Back to you guys in the studio. Yeah, somber indeed. Okay, Tim. And our Jason Colthorpe is live in the neighborhood tonight near where the suspect was arrested after being injured in that shootout. Jason, what do we know about the alleged shooter? Yeah, we're learning a lot more tonight, Kim. Uh, police say this is a guy who has a lengthy criminal history, which includes weapons charges. And police saying tonight he was recently paroled from prison and recently gotten off parole. Now, the streets behind me here earlier, as you could hear Tim and Mara kind of set the scene, cops were everywhere out here, a huge police presence. Some neighbors out here getting the feeling every cop in the city was trying to catch this guy. When the first shots were fired, neighbors in the area of Kentucky and Chippewa noticed it sounded different. I heard five big boom shots consecutive, like boom, 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 boom. Stevetta Johnson knew not to immediately run outside, but later when she stepped off her porch, it was clear Detroit police were racing to secure a perimeter and track somebody down. Never seen that many police cars blocked streets, and I mean they were just coming, you know, coming down the street, Kentucky, coming down from Indiana, Wyoming, and they was blocking the streets and telling people. And then this officer told me and my neighbor, "Get in the house and shut your door." In all of the chaos of a search, both by air and on the ground, a car accident happened at the corner of Wyoming and Chippewa. They can't had uh, armored cars. They had helicopter. You know, it's pretty large presence for the police department. This tow truck driver was responding to that accident when he saw the man suspected of shooting the officers taken into custody. It was one block over in front of a house on Kentucky. He was bleeding from his, looked like from his, from his, up under his armpit. He was shirtless, they cut his shirt off, he was bleeding, they, uh, and he was, uh, Looked like he had been in a, in a fight. Family, please pray for the police officer. Some neighbors thought they might know the suspect, but almost all were upset that an officer was killed and another injured near their homes. It's something else. It is, especially with a police officer. I mean, you know, you got a lot of nerve shooting at the police. Come on now. You're looking at right now the mobile command post that uh, Detroit police has rolled out here about an hour ago, giving you the idea that this is uh, nowhere near the end of the investigation as they set up shop here for the rest of the overnight hours as they finish this investigation. I can tell you we've been at multiple points of the perimeter here that police have set up tonight, and there was a clear change in officers' demeanors, the way they walked, the way what was on their face when the news started to spread that this wasn't just two officers injured, but one injured and one who was killed in the line of duty out here tonight. Guys, back to you. Yeah, just heartbreaking. It really is. All right, Jason. Uh, we're going to continue, of course, to follow any developments on this story. We've still got uh, our reporters on the scene at the hospital. We'll have updates both on air and online at clickondetroit.com. All right, our other big story tonight, a drama-filled day in the auto industry with a big change at the top of the UAW and General Motors filing quite a lawsuit against Fiat Chrysler. General Motors is suing rival FCA for racketeering in an unprecedented lawsuit filed in federal court. The suit claims its late CEO, Sergio Marchione, green-lighted bribery and schemed to force GM into a merger. The lawsuit also alleging FCA corrupted the bargaining process with the UAW in 09, 2011, and 2015 union contracts in order to gain advantages over General Motors. FCA, which recently announced a merger with the French automaker Peugeot, responded by calling the lawsuit quote-unquote meritless and said it would defend itself vigorously, accusing GM of trying to disrupt the merger. Now, as I mentioned, this also saw change at the very top of the UAW with the resignation of Gary Jones as union president. Jones also announced his retirement from the union late this afternoon in the face of the bribery scandal. That announcement came after the UAW confirmed they were making moves to expel Jones and his right-hand man, Vance Pearson. Jones led the UAW for the past 17 months, during which the corruption probe into the union has produced 10 convictions and charges against more than a dozen people. New at 11. A man accused of raping a woman in Oakland County caught just before boarding a flight to leave the country. New tonight, we'll have a closer look at where he was headed. But I want you to know, most assuredly, you will be forgotten by almost everybody. 
He killed his boss last year. Today, the judge delivered a strong statement before sentencing him to life in prison. Here's Ben. Tim, if you see a little bit of sunshine in the morning, don't let that fool you. The rain not far behind, and so is the wind. We'll look at that and a sneak peek at Turkey Day coming up in just a few minutes. Before the holiday season really gets underway, we have important information regarding the money moves you should be making right now. Help me hang tomorrow starting at 6 a.m.